In this video, we're going to look at active transport. This is Mr. Philip Koma, the excellent tutor. All right, so we only have one objective for this video. That is to understand what active transport is all about. So in our previous videos, we looked at diffusion, we looked at osmosis, and I know that by now you know what diffusion is, you know the factors that affect the rate of diffusion, you know the importance, you know what osmosis is, and you know everything about those two, okay? Now, in this video, we're going to focus on active transport. So, from the term active, that simply means energy is required. For something to be active, there is energy. Ngatika mwana kalina energy kama ngala active. Understand? So, active means energy is needed. So, what is active transport? Active transport occurs in cells. It is basically the movement of molecules or ions from a region of their low, uh, their low concentration to a region of their high concentration against the concentration gradient using energy of respiration. So let's pause there. Here they are saying that active transport occurs where? In cells. And it is the movement of what? Molecules or ions from a region of their low concentration to a region of their high concentration. In this case, ions are moving from where they are less concentrated to where they are highly concentrated. Under diffusion and osmosis, we have been learning that particles or molecules are moving from where they are highly concentrated to where they are less concentrated. But in this case, it's the opposite. Ions are moving from where they are less concentrated to where they are highly concentrated. And for that to be possible, energy is vital. Energy is needed. It's like you are climbing a ladder. You are moving from the lower ground to a higher ground. So for you to move to that higher ground, there is need for energy. As you are climbing that ladder, you are using up energy. And that's what happens in this case. Now, the source, the source of energy for active transport is respiration. To be specific, cellular respiration or internal respiration. Now, active transport occurs in living active cells only because it needs energy. These cells usually have a structure called mitochondria which respires, producing energy to be used in active transport. So when you look at a cell, it contains the mitochondria, right? And we know the function of the mitochondria because it's also a powerhouse. It's also known to be a powerhouse. It is in the mitochondria where respiration occurs. And respiration is a process that provides energy. Therefore, active transport will take place in living and active cells that contain mitochondria, which will provide the energy for this process to occur. Okay. So active transport happens where? In roots. We're going to learn about root hair cells in future. So know that active transport happens in roots to absorb mineral salts from the soil. It also occurs in the digestive system of mammals. You as an animal, how do you take up ions? Through the process of what? Active transport in the digestive system. If oxygen is absent, respiration won't take place. Active transport will stop. So oxygen is vital to uh, promote respiration, which will promote active transport. So if we do not have oxygen, what does that mean? We won't have respiration, isn't it? Because remember, uh, anyway, we haven't yet looked at aerobic respiration, but aerobic respiration is a type of respiration which occurs in the presence of oxygen. And under this type of respiration, there are high amounts of energy that are released. Okay, so that energy is going to be used in the process of what? Active transport, which is one of the processes which requires energy. Okay, but when we do not have oxygen, we won't have aerobic respiration. Therefore, we won't have energy to promote active transport. That's what this statement means. So if oxygen is absent, respiration won't take place. 
active transport will stop. So molecules are taken into the cell by protein carriers within the cell membrane. And that's what I want to explain in this video specifically. I want to talk about how the ions, how the molecules are moving, my students, from where they are less concentrated to where they are highly concentrated. That's the purpose of this video. So I want you to follow me very well. So we're saying that molecules or ions are taken into the cell by protein carriers. Let us look at these guys. Protein carriers, what are they? During active transport, protein carriers within the cell membrane help move molecules against their concentration gradient. So let me use a diagram. Let us say this is our cell. And what we have, which I have drawn right now, is the cell membrane. Inside, we're going to have our nucleus like that. And then we have a cell membrane. Makaona ka cell membrane, right? Within the cell membrane, we have protein carriers. So these guys, they are the ones that are playing a role in the process of what? Active transport. So within the cell membrane, we have what we call protein carriers. Now, for these protein carriers to move ions from this region to this region, there is need for energy. So the protein carriers use energy to transport substances across the cell membrane. So it, there will be a requirement of energy for this ion to move going into the cell. Okay, now let me show you a diagram and then... Uh, later on, I'll show you a, 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 a snippet of a video to help you understand. So that is our diagram there. Now, we know that active transport requires energy, isn't it? And that energy comes from the process of respiration. Now, what we need to know about the energy is this. Once energy has been produced from respiration, it is not directly used. Instead, it is converted into a form known as ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Now, this form is a form in which your body stores up energy. So if you can check here, we've got ATP. ATP is a form in which your body will store up energy. If that energy needs to be used, ATP will be broken down into what? ADP and PI. PI stands for inorganic phosphate. So when the energy is produced from the process of respiration, what we are saying is that it is converted into a form known as ATP. Now, ATP is a form in which energy is stored. Now, this conversion, how does it happen? Inorganic phosphate will combine with adenosine diphosphate. They will combine. When they combine, they will form ATP. I repeat, inorganic phosphate, which is PI, will combine with ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. When they combine, they are going to form what? ATP. So ATP is made up of inorganic phosphate and adenosine diphosphate. When they combine, they will form ATP. Now, when the energy is now needed, that one which was reserved, which was, which was stored in a form of ATP, will be utilized. How? The ATP will break down. It will break down into the original components, which is inorganic phosphate and adenosine diphosphate. And in the process of ATP breaking down into these two uh, constituents, energy is going to be released. And that energy will now be used in different processes like active transport. Otherwise, you're going to learn this when we look at respiration. So don't worry. Otherwise, what we have here, ATP, is just a form in which energy is stored. And once it breaks down, well, we are seeing that it is now going to be converted back into what made it, which is ADP and PI, which stands for inorganic phosphate. So where it is shaded pink there, that's the energy now which is being used, okay? This guy which is shaded gray is the uh, carrier protein. 
it is the one that is doing the act the action remember it is found within within the cell membrane and it helps move ions from where they are less concentrated to where they are uh, highly concentrated so this area here it is less concentrated low concentration and these which are uh, shaded red the round balls the round red balls they are the ions that are going to move from this area coming from this area coming to this area through this guy which we are calling a carrier protein so what happens is this this carbo it will bind there it will enter when it enters energy is going to be used to change the shape of this carrier protein and we are going to have something like this now which is here once it changes the shape it will open from the inside and that op uh, that uh, ion will now enter i repeat let me erase and then let, yeah, let me erase so what we're saying is these two around balls this one will enter right once it enters the energy which is here it will be used this energy will be used to change the shape of this guy and then it will cause it to open from the inside as we are seeing here once it opens from the inside the ion will now come out and it will go and join the others remember it is moving from where it is less concentrated to where it is highly concentrated now let me let me show you a, a short video so as you can see we have our carrier protein which is shaded blue and those uh, uh, purple, I don't know what shape that is, they are moving from where they are less concentrated to where they are highly concentrated. So they will bind. When they bind, it will now open from the inside. When it opens from the inside, the one which are shaded in purple, they will now join the others. So that opening from the inside is as a result of the energy which is coming from ATP. Okay. So the energy is used in that way. It is used to help the carrier proteins the carrier proteins they use the energy to transport ions across the membranes that's how active transport occurs and this process of active transport is important because it is through this process that roots are able to absorb mineral ions from the soil going into the plants all right so that's what you need to know under active transport I hope this video has helped you. I hope you now understand active transport. I hope you now understand diffusion as well as osmosis. This has been Mr. Philip Kaoma, the excellent tutor. This is the end of this topic. Make sure to do the assignment. Make sure to study. Go through past papers and answer questions. Remember, for you to get that distinction... You need to do your best. Dedicate your time to your books. Make sure that you study. Those are the things that are required for you to stand out. All right. Stay blessed.